Welcome to Cardboard and Plastic. Today's video, I'm going to show you a bunch of cards that I bought graded for less than the cost of grading for these companies. So, for instance, SGC costs about $22 to grade. It was even more when I bought this card. And I got this 1951 Redback for Rizzuto for $22 shipped to my house. Now, a little crease on it, definitely deserves 2.5, but again, a lot of these 1951 tops have little creases on them, so it's really hard to get those in higher grades. And I am a Hall of Fame collector, so I like the Hall of Fame rookies, so the majority of the cards I'm gonna show you are just Hall of Fame rookies that I want slabbed for my collection. And by the way, that's not the only way to collect, right? These cards are pretty cheap cards, but I'm allowing somebody else to go ahead and submit these, try to get their tens, and then they have to unload all their eights, sevens, and nines on eBay, on ComC for less than they paid for grading and I get to add those to my collection. So I do have like some of these cards that I'll show you. So I have them in top loaders. So I'll show you, I have one of them in here. So Ken Griffey Jr. Rookie. Again, looks great in a top loader. Troy Aikman Rookie. And Andre Reed. Now, this is fine for me just to have these in top loaders, but for my Hall of Fame collection, I want these slapped. And right now, we, the collectors, and, well, investors and flippers, we're sending 1.5 million cards about every single month to these grading companies to put these cards in plastic. And a lot of times, too, it's not only the cards that we're sending them, we actually take these cards we don't like the grade, we crack it out, we send it again, we send it again, again, until the person gets the grade that they want. So these cards, majority of them I spent between 7 and $12 for the majority of these cards, which I'm going to show you. And with this video, it's just really upsetting for me to see, well, Sports Card Investor had a video today with him and his son with $1,000, $500 each challenge to try to buy as many, like five cards. And then they're going to, I guess, put them on the whatnot and see who makes the most money. This was what's really bothering me about the hobby is kids see that video. They see a teenager just spending $500 of his father's money to try to make money. And I think we're really losing what collecting is. So if you like graded cards, you can build a very cheap, great collection. And these cards aren't going to lose money. I paid like $9 shipped to my house for this card. An Alice English rookie. And by the way, it says the corners are the worst part of this and the centering. Really, the centering is not that bad. And tell me, do those corners look horrible? So the worst that happens is I buy that card for $9, and then the hobby really goes down, and I could still sell that for $8, $7. We got ourselves in trouble in the hobby because we had cards like this, which are very common. And actually, I bought a lot of these raw for 8 to $10. I graded them through PSA. And then I got a bunch of PSA 10s. And I took those PSA 10s, sold them for $100 to $150, and reinvested that into my collection. And this one is the only one I have left for the base. I have a couple of golds. I have a PSA 10 gold, which I'm going to try to get rid of as well. That's way too much money for a common card. But this card is the one I'm keeping. It has great centering, and I bought this card off of ComC for, I believe, like $9 to $10. All right, so good enough for me. 
This stays in my PC, and this is a great example of this card. So really quick, I'm just going to go over some of the cards here. And again, all these cards, this is a BGS. And if you're an OCD collector and only need PSA slabs, this is going to be very hard for you to watch. Uh, just there, I have a CSG slab, SGC, HGA, and I have a BGS slab. And here's a new label, CSG. Here's another Hall of Fame rookie card. A great PSA 9, Barry Sanders. This card you can buy under $20 if you look around. A lot of people got these graded. And they keep the 10s or try to sell the 10s for a lot of money and they have to get rid of those nines. Here's a beautiful eight. Andre Reed, rookie. Not a Hall of Famer, but a Mark McGuire and decently center. And I really like these SGC slabs of the old, with more of like the 80s and the 70s, the vintage cards look much better. I don't really like the chrome in these, but they're still not bad. Just cool to have a Randy Johnson from his rookie year. An 8.5, Ken Griffey. A 1989, or sorry, 87, uh, PSA 9. Greg Maddox, you've got to be really careful of these cards. These cards, the tops traded look different than the regular tops. Uh, they're more glossy on the back and brighter yellow. So a lot of people will say, try to say that this is a Tiffany. This is not a Tiffany. I do have a Tiffany of this, which is a lot more money. And this one's off-centered, but a beautiful card. Ryan Sandberg. And again, maybe one day I'll try to upgrade this card. And when I do, I'll go ahead and sell this one, basically break even with it, and just keep on adding to my collection. So I'm going to do a few of these videos of how do I collect on a really tight budget and also some of the tricks and techniques I use for buying raw cards to grade. So I think it's really important that when you collect cards that you just collect what you want, how you want, and really kind of avoid a lot of that, the social media, especially younger collectors. You're not going to have your daddy give you $500 to go spend on some modern cards to try to flip. So let me know in the comments, do you look for the tens or do you like to buy the nines and lower grades on eBay and let those other people pay those grading costs? So again, have a great day and keep on collecting.